Welcome again to another Rewards episode. In this video, we will show you some basic concepts about Jaskawa Robot Arms, formerly known as Motoman. We will mainly focus on DX200 and YRC1000 version controllers, but it can be applied to previous controllers since their software philosophy hasn't changed much. So, first of all, we will create a new program. In Jaskawa, programs are called jobs. So we go into the main menu, select job, and create new job. Once we are in the job, we will need to move the robot to create new lines. To do that, we will need to have the key selector switch in teach mode, which is the hand icon, and then activate servo on. Once it's ready and we see the green light, we can press the deadman switch, and then the brakes will be released. Now you are able to move the robot. So now if I press S plus, you can see it's moving to one direction, and if I press S minus to the other direction. Even though the key says X, Y, Z, uh, those are world coordinates or tool coordinates. In Jaskawa, the axes are called S, L, U, R, B, T. You can see them in the buttons in smaller letters underneath the X, Y, Z. And every robot will have its own markings engraved in the robot. In my case, uh, we can see this in the red tape. Right now we're moving in joints, and as you can see, it's moving every single axis individually. So axis 1 is S, axis 2 is L, 3 is U, 4 is R, 5 is B, and 6 is T. So here concludes the demonstration on how to move the robot, but what if we want to save the point in the program? To do that, we'll have to turn the servo on again, press the deadman switch, and then press insert, right here on the bottom right. Once the green LED is turned on, you can press the enter button, and you will have created a new line. In this case, I created a move J, which is a movement by joints. Later, we will show you how to change the type of movement into linear or circular or other type of movement. Let's recreate the steps and create another point. So here is the second point, and now let's do again another point. So we move the robot again to another position, and then press uh, insert and enter. Pretty simple once you know the commands. So now that we have some points, let's try them. In most controllers, even for other brands, you will have a forward and backward button, which in manual, if you have the servos on and the deadman switch, you can press forward and it will go to the next point or backwards and will go to the previous point. This way we can double check if the point has been saved correctly or there's any problem with the movement. But what if there's any problem with the movement really? What do you do to delete the position? So to delete the position, you will need to select the point. If you are deleting a single position, the robot needs to be physically in that position with the motors on and the deadman switch pressed. So that's why it's useful the backward and forward key. If you are in position, you will be able to select the delete key and then enter, and the line will be gone. Let's try that again. So we'll go into the position, press the forward key, remember, serve already, and then deadman switch, forward, then and then enter. So what happens if you have a move into that position? Let's try with the last point. So if we press uh, delete and then enter, an error will pop up and it will tell you to move the robot to that position. Which is a bit weird because later we'll show you how to select in bulk and delete. And you don't need to be in that position because you're selecting a few lines. So what if we want to modify the position instead of deleting it? The steps are the same for every single shortcut button. As before, first it is necessary in the program to place the cursor and select the point to be modified. As always, we will have the servo on and the desmond switch pressed. Then we activate modify and then enter once you are in the new position. So let's check if the position has been modified. Here instead of pressing the backward button, I want up one line and selected the previous line and then selected forward. It works the same way. So now that we have verified that the movement has been recorded, let's go into motion types. To change the movement from point to point in the program, we will have to select motion type here down on the bottom. If you change motion type, you can move J, move L, and other type of movements, like circular or spline, which are move C and move S. A spline is a curvy line defined by different circumferences. Now, to change the speed, 
you will need to press the fast and slow buttons. This will change the speed in manual jogging and automatic mode. In this controller, as you can see, we have three settings, low, medium, and high. To change the jogging coordinate system, you can press the button on the top chord and it will change the reference system between world, tool, cartesian, joints, and so on. Every single line has different parameters and you can change them by selecting the line. Once you're on the line, you can click select. But you can also change some of the options that are shown directly on the line. For example, the speed. However, if you change the speed, the next point that you create will have the same speed. Let me show you guys. So we move the robot, click insert, enter. It's not letting us because we are not on the number, but on the line actually. So if you're on the line, you cannot insert a new line. Here we can verify that the speed is the same as the previous line that we modified before. If you're new to Yaskawa, these shortcuts probably are great, but not all the instructions are here. So if you want to see all the commands available, you can press the inform list button and you will see this menu on the right hand side. As you can see, you can navigate through the different instruction types. Even though I'm using the keys all the time, this remote teach pendant is touchscreen. Now, this menu on the right side won't even disappear even if you add a new instruction. To remove the menu, you will need to press inform list again. To select multiple lines, you will have to have the cursor over the line and then you press shift and enter at the same time. Then you can use the arrows to select the number of lines you want. Then by clicking on edit, you can copy, paste or cut, even delete. For example, here I copy three lines and then I pasted it at the bottom. So now the lines that are above the move J are duplicated below. Let me show you. So lines 9, 10 and 11 are the same as 13, 14 and 15. Now let's delete a couple of lines. Unlike the delete shortcut, here you don't need to be in any position, not even in the star or the last one. So you just uh, shift enter, select the lines that you want to delete and then edit delete. And then just confirm it and press yes. Now here we have a more advanced function which is adding arguments to a function or calling another job inside a job, nesting jobs. So we go into inform list, control and call. Once inserted, we can select the function and we can add uh, as many arguments as we want. So right now, let's deselect the ones that I'm using. And now there won't be any parameters in the function. As you can see at the bottom, there is no parentheses, one, one. So if we select the first two again and we say that we're using these two arguments and we go back, we can see the same function, parentheses, one, comma, one. Unlike before, you can use the arrows and on the bottom, you can directly change the parameters of the function. So for example, we can change the job that we're calling or the initialization of their arguments. And finally, if you want to run a program on automatic mode, you will need to turn the key switch to the middle icon, which looks like a centrifuge. As always, we select server own and then the start button on the top, the green one. Once it eliminates, it will run the program that you have selected. The program selected will be the one that you have opened before and you are visualizing on the screen. To reset any faults, you will need to click on the button on the right, which is white, and it will turn orange. Right now, this program doesn't have a loop. You can add a loop or you can make the robot go into continuous cycle. So let me show you guys what I mean by this. So right now, if we finish the program, the robot will stop. To make a continuous cycle, we just go into job and then go into cycle and then select the auto function. Go back into the job, press start, and you will see that this time it won't stop. It will jump back to the top. And finally, we have created a program on the robot. I wouldn't say we have automated anything because it's not doing nothing useful, but we've learned a lot this time, right? I hope you acquired a lot of new knowledge today. Hope you like this video. And as always, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And if you had any doubts, questions or suggestions, please leave a comment below. See you in the next video.